Let's get started. All right, Ike and Liza and Jenna, it's that time. Finally, finally, a status update on the Rebel Rally team. Uh, and I think what people have been hotly anticipating, at least since last week when we said we might talk about it, is the full unveil of the magnificent, I think is the only way to describe it, list <laughs> of sponsors uh, that uh, that you guys have, have gathered over the course of the last few weeks. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so, so let's start with... Uh, with a little uh, status update on uh, on the car and on you guys and the training and uh, so how's how's all that going? Oh, you know, we're like 30 ish days from the rebel by the time this <laughs> airs and we're not panicking, we're not worried. No, everything is fine. This is fine. We're fine. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I thought you were going to say, like, we're about 30-ish percent prepared. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, would say, I would say we're doing pretty good. Thanks to Stephen, who has been kind of coming down into the workshop in between meetings and in between phone calls, sometimes on his conference calls, <laughs> coming down and, um, and making magic happen with the truck. Um, I think we're going to be okay. And Jen is here this weekend. And we're, uh, we're doing a lot of prep this weekend. We're, we're doing a lot of organizing and packing and unpacking and checking off all of our lists and, you know, just kind of trying to dot our I's, cross our T's, make sure we have a really good plan of attack for the next 30 days so that we can go into it as prepared as possible and finish any other maintenance on the truck. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there. Maybe what percentage of the checklist is completed, would you say? I mean, everything on the <laughs> checklist has been started. I don't nice. know if we're talking about how many things have been crossed off. We're probably only at like, I don't know, 25%. There's we're a lot of lists, though. I mean, it depends which list you're referring <laughs> to, you know, different categories of lists, different mm -hmm. topic mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. The goal mm -hmm. by the weekend is like if we can get to like 85% mm -hmm. of those lists, like, you know, checked yeah. off, we're going to. We're going to breathe a little easier. The goal is by the time you return from the Rebel Rally, if 85% of the list is done. Then <laughs> I you're figure probably. by December. Yeah. We're going to be yeah. ready to go yeah. by December. No problem. problem. Perfect. Yeah, in, Perfect. The, in the car yesterday, Stephen said, pencils down by Thursday this week. Yeah, I did say that. Pencils down by Thursday. <laughs> yeah, dang. <laughs> God, That's soon. okay. Yeah. Are there specific uh, checklist items that you're like uh, worried about or or avoiding? Uh, well, today's big project is going to be the Terra trip, which mm -hmm. we know is going to be a bit of a nightmare to calibrate. They're no notoriously really persnickety. Mm -hmm. Um, once we have that done and we went out this morning and we'll post some videos. We went out this morning and, uh, I followed Jenna as she took a little wheel measure, what yeah, like things? a, survey, a wheel. survey wheel. And she ran alongside where we determined is going to be a really great place to mark out an exact kilometer. And so Jenna went for a little jog and I had my flashers on driving really slowly behind her. 3,280 feet and 10 in. I, I wish you'd taken video of that. <laughs> I totally did. I have video. Yeah. Yes. One kilometer is 3,280 feet and 10 inches. Actually, 10.071 right. inches. That's right. So <laughs> so we have to mark out that kilometer, calibrate the Terra trip, make sure that it works properly. And then, and we'll get to this later in the show, when we get our new wheels and tires, <laughs> then we have to calibrate it one more time. So making sure that we go through these motions today. Knowing it's going to take a little while, but once it's done, then, you know, we'll kind of uh, be a little more familiar with the process. And once we illegally tag the sidewalk. Yeah, we're going to we're going to deface the sidewalk with some tracking marks sure. so that we can come back yeah. and do we it. We put tape down. For those listeners who aren't familiar with the Terra Trip, tell us a little bit about that. So the Terra Trip is um, it's like a little external odometer that, um, you know, is going to give us our distance traveled. It, we can set different trips on it. It's going to um, exact speed, exact speed, which is really important because the the uh, gauge <laughs> in this truck, anything below about thirty five miles an hour, and the 
but, you know, your speed is doing this. It's it could be anywhere. Approximation. It's anywhere. Take yeah. the average of whatever <laughs> that needle is bouncing from here to here. Transmission gear probably needs a little refresh, but that's all right. You know, you know, but that's okay. We're just, we're just doing a rally where like speed and distance is kind of the most important thing that you need to know. It's <laughs> precision, <okay. laughs> precise, accurate speed and distance. Yeah, that's are, right. Are you so, saying that the, uh, the, the speedometer and odometer in a vintage Land Rover are not precision instruments? <laughs> Thankfully, generally, that's true. But in this case, we actually need them to be. We yeah. actually yeah. do need them to be. <laughs> so anyway, so the, the Terra trip is is uh, a much more accurate way of being able to keep an eye on that. So we have a separate display um, for one of the one of us, and the Terra trip displays a little bit more info. And we put some um, what do you call them, Stephen? What are the things you put on the dash? Oh, that's a, a T track along the uh, mm -hmm. along the dash. It's actually from a uh, fishing kayak that uh, mm -hmm. has a, a, a now a T track, a quarter twenty T track Missing. along the the dash, <laughs> so that we can we can move stuff around. Yeah, you can get your yeah. fly rod on there. You know, you can uh, <laughs> a variety of different cup holders uh, can attach to it. But yeah, that's how we have the the Terra trip bolted down because uh, no one can make a decision on where things should finally rest. So this way, nobody has to. doesn't matter. Did, did the kayaker give that up voluntarily? There you go. And Stephen had to make, Stephen had to make a middle of the night phone call to our good friend, Bob Ives to compare mm. where uh, the sensor goes in his camel trophy so that we could compare notes and make sure that ours got hooked up correctly. Yeah. So it is, uh, it is, uh, to camel trophy spec. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see how that goes. It actually has a little flag that basically sticks off of one of the bolts on the front drive shaft and then a sensor that is uh, bolted to an unused hole on the side of the, uh, LT 77 uh, gearbox and, uh, some bracketry needed to be fabricated in order to, uh, fix those things and then uh and then the uh the little two uh conductor uh sensor wires need to, to snake their way all the way up through the inside and the uh, uh up onto the top of the dash and into the terror trip and uh it sees the probe but since installing it the defender has not moved so tough to say if it works or not but it is at least in the right spot so, it's going to uh, work perfectly the very first time we take yeah. it out. No and we're, we'll probably yeah. find out today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've got the uh, the engine uh, monitoring uh, computer in there, the EMC, that tells us exactly what the temperature of the uh, fluid in the radiator is and exactly what the engine oil pressure and oil temperature is. It gives a warning if the fluid in the uh, radiator gets low or any of that sort of stuff. So uh, lots of rally computer instrument stuff uh, has been added so as to make the uh, experience experience a uh hopefully a little more uh tolerable more uh, things yeah. to the car to, that can go wrong yes yes, yes. <laughs> this is a recipe yes. for success <laughs> yeah it just tells yeah. you what's failing so you know sometimes <laughs> ignorance is is bliss not knowing that the car is overheating is sometimes better than knowing yeah one of the things that jenna was doing yesterday was going through all of the spare parts and starting to pack our spare parts box and marking off which ones are going to travel with us in the car on a daily basis which ones we're going to have the Rebel carry. So um, we can choose to leave uh, two bins worth of parts with the Rebel mechanics. They'll carry it for the uh, duration of the event. And if we have to tap into those parts bins, they ding us some points. Say so We get penalties uh, assessed against us for accessing those parts. It's a one-time penalty. I basically told them, just go ahead and take that penalty yeah. right <laughs> off the top. Just take it right off the top. We're in a 30-year-old <laughs> defender. We're going to need those parts. Yeah. But some parts we're going to keep in the car regardless so that we don't have to access the bin. So consumables, like electrical, mm -hmm. little fiddly bits. Yeah. Uh, Filters, detectors. spark plugs, yeah, the, the kind kinds of, of things that, like, if it goes wrong in the middle of the day, we don't want to have to haul back mm -hmm. to... Uh, you know, call back to, to base camp to fix. We can we can do that ourselves. So, mm -hmm. but also while we're on this topic, what is the they Stephen and Liza have this really good app that they've been using that make oh. these lists and it's really helpful. Airtable, yeah. yeah. Airtable is a uh, 
a database that looks like a spreadsheet and it works mm-hmm. super good for doing inventory and stuff like that. So yeah, we actually have photographs of all the parts uh, all organized together and we're going to print off because of course there's no iPads or anything that can come with you. Uh, we're going to print off a, uh, a sort of a dictionary of parts and exactly where we uh, stowed those parts so that when something inevitably explodes, you can uh, figure out where uh, where it is. And uh, now I'm it. not saying that the other rookie teams that are driving like brand new Broncos or Jeeps are missing out on this experience, but I guarantee <laughs> that they're not thinking about spare parts with quite the same amount of thoroughness that we have to consider. <laughs> I mean, we could yeah. build a lot of a car. Like we could. <laughs> We could. Yeah. Yeah. There is basically, I mean, if it can break, save the engine or the gearbox, which I did think about sending a separate gearbox, but <laughs> they basically have a spare. If it turns or if it has electricity going through it or, or if it bolts <laughs> yeah. or, yeah, it has splines, uh, you, you very likely have a spare and sometimes two. So, uh, yeah, you should be, you should be good. You're, you're not quite camel trophy prepared because then we would have a separate set of axles and a separate gearbox. And, but uh, then we would also have a bunch of other Land Rovers following yeah. us <laughs> through the wilderness. Yeah, chase so. vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. You would have a workshop truck uh, following you. Yeah, to put yeah. all that stuff uh, on and back together. And uh, I think. I think at one point they had to like fly in a, a, a gearbox into the middle of the jungle or something by helicopter. So I have to ask. Let's be really that. clear. The driving that we're doing <laughs> does not compare to Camel Trophy. No. The challenge of the Rebel Rally is in the uh, navigation side of it, right? So no GPS, no cell phones. We can't access anything that has a data signal out to the real world. We get a map at five o'clock in the morning. We got to be in the car ready to drive by roughly seven o'clock and out we go for the day. So, um, you know, hopefully the driving isn't so intense that we're breaking a ton of stuff, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but we want to make sure that that doesn't derail us because now we have all these sponsors that we want to make sure that we do them proud and that we finish the race and that we do the best that we can. And you just don't look like a strong by something silly. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I, I yeah. have a quick, quick question that's related to this. Do you have spare navigational equipment? Like, do you have spare yes. compass water? <laughs> yes, and in fact, we have a set that will stay in the car, and a stay and a set that will come with us, and another backup set. So we should be. So if you have a leaky Post-it compass notes. halfway through, yeah. you can just go to the spare. Yeah, a yes. Jerry can of compass water. <laughs> compass water. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, is, we're not allowed to carry our own fuel for the event. Mm-hmm. So we swapped out our jerry can um, on the back door and we swapped it out for a water can and um, and replaced it with our water carrying system. Full of instead. vodka, just Full in case. Vodka. <laughs> yeah. And it's pretty You can't a carry spigot. your own spare fuel? No. No, we're not allowed to. I, um, I think that given that our vehicle probably doesn't get the same gas mileage as, say, you know, the the EV Jeeps that will doing this <laughs> that will be doing this with us, um, definitely having to to think about our timing throughout the day and maybe having to forego some checkpoints late in the day might have to be a strategic decision to make sure we have enough fuel to get back to base camp. Mm-hmm. At the end of the night. Yeah, could have probably used an auxiliary uh, fuel, fuel tank. Like yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, well. or a precise yeah. fuel gauge. <laughs> or a precise fuel gauge, and neither of which it uh, it has. Uh, the, uh, yeah. We own a brand new 2021 Defender. Could we have done yeah. the Rebel in that? Sure. Are we doing it? No. <laughs> no, no. Where's the fun in that? Where's the fun in that? Yeah, exactly. I think still you guys should have done it in the 80 inch. Uh, that'll go all day on a mm-hmm. tank of fuel, no problem. You I think we should in a future year i do too yeah i do too yeah. but there were a lot of reasons why this felt like the right choice for our first rebel you know um definitely we are giving up some creature comforts by going with this vehicle but we have some advantages in this one that we wouldn't have in the 80 inch or and yeah. or, you know a, a well the defender is a near like purpose that. built rally car so it uh yeah if you're if you're going to be That's successful true. i would say honestly even over the modern defender mm-hmm. your probably likelihood of success in the 90 is is probably the highest as uh there isn't all kinds of fiddly bits uh to <laughs> to get fouled up there's only you know seriously splined and greased bits to get uh, <laughs> fouled up but uh, at least those are fairly uh easily serviced without a laptop so 
Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to print off all of the appropriate chapters in the field manuals and affix them to the spares that they belong to and try to make it as easy, not just for you guys, but I'm sure for a team of mechanics that have uh, that every vehicle is spelled J-E-E-P in their mind. So uh, it will be uh, good. To <laughs> oh, G-E-P. Geep. All those keeps geep. that we're going to be creating. <laughs> the funny thing is, is I can just, I can just uh, deep fake that out now. You'll never yeah. even know I said it. I'll leave this in, but people have no idea what I'm talking about. So I can just deep fake it out. I almost deep faked. We have just switched to a new editorial platform for the show. And one of the things that it does is allow me to deep fake my own voice. I haven't gotten Ike's consent to do his yet, uh, which I will, them. nor will you ever. I will deep fake that consent. Uh, yeah. Linus does a pretty good Ike impression. I think we could probably make it work. But um, yeah, so it, it allows us to replace lines and stuff if I foul things things up which i do constantly and now you'll never know this yeah. this whole show could be uh, a robot i tried to do the intro last week and it was just super it was weird absurd. so it, it fakes the video huh it doesn't fake the video. It doesn't fake the video. No, it doesn't make, but only, Speaking only of, if people don't know, they can go watch the the episodes on YouTube in case our listeners aren't aware of this fact. Yeah, join all of our moms in watching the show on uh, YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube. So, yeah, we'll get it's those subscribers. So, true. speaking <laughs> of sponsors and our moms, uh also huge sponsors, uh you know, spiritually if not financially, uh, there's some big news around sponsors. There's a big change uh, when it comes to the the previous banner sponsor, the Underpowered Hour, is no longer the the banner sponsor. Well, first of all, you'll always be banner sponsor <laughs> in our heart. Mm -hmm. um, and Lord knows that all the behind the scenes effort you're doing definitely makes you banner sponsor to us. Mm -hmm. But yes, we have a new title sponsor. We put together a sponsorship package this summer. And we started shopping it around, and it turns out that people can really get behind this idea of an all-women's off-road navigation rally. People really love it. And so we were very successful in getting some sponsors that want to support us. And, and I also think when, uh, when told that uh, this particular podcast would be uh, advertising on the side of a vehicle, uh, people jumped at the chance to make sure that to didn't replace happen. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to replace <laughs> it. Yeah, to replace it, yeah. Over and yeah, up. Nobody wants that. Overwhelming, <laughs> overwhelming response to, uh, no, no, right. no, 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 don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> now, Ooh. instead of being called Team Underpowered Hour, we will officially be the Full Sail Dream Team. <laughs> which uh, has a lot of nice. backstory behind it. Full Sail University in Orlando, Florida, which happens to be Stephen's alma mater, they loved this idea and they decided not only to come on board as a title sponsor, but they put together a team of uh, women students and coordinators in their production program that are backing us up and they're designing the wrap for the vehicle, which will do a big unveiling right before we leave for the Rebel. They're going to handle a lot of our social media while we're on the road, keeping everybody in the loop as to what's going on. And, and we're going to do some follow up projects with them using some of our footage and some of our audio recordings after the Rebel is done. And um you know, super, super excited to kind of develop this relationship with them and grow into a hopefully multi-year sponsorship with them and see mm -hmm. what we can do to get more women covering this event in terms of, you know, maybe some broadcasting interns, some journalism interns, and, you know, get more women into motorsports, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Mm -hmm. I love that they're not just, you know, it's not just a sponsorship, like it's really engaging the students and really trying to empower and build up these gals that are in the program and yeah. just developing a longer term, I don't know, outcome. Stephen, you might have to fill us in on to why we're called the Dream Team. Yeah, well, I think, you know, again, I I'll say that, uh, you know, if you're, uh, listen, there's lots of private schools in the world. There's very few that are uh, media centric and creative centric, quite like Full Cell is, I would say, maybe not another one. But but I would just put it to other uh, private post-secondary in institutions like Harvard, Yale, these sort of folks. Uh, where is your uh, women's amateur <laughs> motorsport team? Just saying, doesn't it feel like, uh, you know, yachting and things is, uh, you know, a little behind the curve? Uh, think about getting into uh, amateur racing. And, uh, you know, then I think uh, then I think you're 
you're really recruiting the student of the future. But yeah, no, I mean, it's just an amazing opportunity to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very involved with, with Full Sail. They're uh, obviously a, a super important uh, part of, uh, of my life. Gary Jones and John Phelps, a gentleman who uh, started the school, are uh, very, very good friends and have empowered my ability to do the things that I, I do now. Uh, it's fair to say without John Phelps and Gary Jones, there may not be a Game of Thrones. So there you go. Mm. A few years ago now, myself and uh, some other members of the uh, uh, of the uh, alumni, of which we're all, uh, you know, a few of us are quite good uh, friends, Leslie Brathwaite, uh, 27 time Grammy winning mixer for Cardi B and a couple of other things like that. Gary Rizzo, who is, winner uh, of whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gary Rizzo, who's won a number of Academy Awards for uh, feature film mixing. Uh, Larry Katz, who is a first AD and has worked on the Avengers and Shaft and a number of, you know, he's done a bunch of things. We, we got together uh, with Cordy Ryerson, who, uh, who runs uh, a, a team at Microsoft about, uh, like I said, about five years ago or so. And the school started uh, with Gary and John in a uh, 1970s GMC motorhome. For those of you who are not familiar with the 70s GMC motorhome, it's pretty awesome. Uh, GMC decided they were going to make like the ultimate motor coach back in the 70s. It's a ground up. It's one of the only non-conversion motorhomes that's ever been built. And it's super iconic, sort of tube-shaped thing. Looks very futuristic. Um, they got one of these uh, things and they turned it into a recording studio studio and they moved the recording studio from place to place doing these sessions um, and they called that vehicle the dream machine uh, and in the 90s, uh, they gave it away because they didn't need it anymore because the campus now in uh, Winter Park, Florida, takes up about nine city blocks. It's a Whoa. absolutely enormous. There's nine feature film uh, sound stages. There's some of the best recording studios in the in the country. Uh, it is a pretty significant undertaking these days. But it all started in this little GMC motorhome uh, 40 years ago, now almost 45 years ago. And so we decided for the 40th anniversary of the school uh, that we would find it. We'd find the original dream machine we'd go out and buy it back from whoever had it we'd restore it we'd get <laughs> to the point where it was hard to find like we kind of knew where it was so it we it went to new jersey somewhere so i hired a private detective to see if he could track it down <laughs> and he did he did track it down uh it uh, was in a fire and got Ooh. burned out completely and then it was scrapped in like the late 90s so there was no more uh, dream machine so we uh we decided we would do a, a sort of tribute vehicle so we we set out to find a 1970s gmc motorhome which, as you can imagine, uh, are pretty tough. It's Land Rover grade difficult to find one of those things. But there is a really strong, much like Land Rovers, there is a really strong, uh, you know, group of very odd, mostly older gentlemen that uh, that have, uh, you know, sort of a bead on these things. We were able to find one in St. Augustine, Florida, which is not that far away from Winter Park. And uh, we set about restoring one and uh, we built a bolt for bolt uh, recreation of the original full cell dream machine except we left it empty inside with the idea that it's going to be a creative space for students so there's an installation inside of the dream machine on campus every quarter uh, for a different degree program to uh, to use that's the the plan for it in the future so i think obviously for me that it's, it's incredibly serendipitous to have the uh, the dream team now extend to all things full sail motorsports. I wouldn't exactly <laughs> call the original dream machine heavy motorsports. It takes a uh, it takes a like a coffee cup of gasoline poured into the carburetor to get that thing to start now. But uh, but we do drive it. It does start, and we do drive it. And uh, and so I think the idea is to match the livery of the original dream machine, uh, which is a very seventies retro pirate ship on the side. So that's going to be great. Uh, to the uh, to the Defender. They're both white. They're both giant, and they both uh, need a cup of uh, uh, gasoline in the carburetor to get started in the morning so <laughs> it feels uh, it feels appropriate uh, to uh, to sort of match the two but yeah so we we sort of uh, put together the full sail dream team to restore the uh, uh, the original dream machine and that includes any anybody who 
who uh, works on it or likes it. Now they have all kind of merchandise and stuff you can buy with Dream Machines on it and stuff. So it's pretty cool. It was a pretty neat project. And uh, this is going to be uh, a really neat extension of that. I think we'll actually take the Defender down to full sale in March for the sort of homecoming Hall of Fame uh, ceremony and get some pictures of it with the real Dream cool. Machine. And uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be pretty cool. So yeah, that's where it sort of came from. And, uh, you know, such an incredible group of people down there, always up for any crazy idea we have like, hey, what if you guys sponsored this team and got all of the you know young women uh, you know on campus and all the different degree programs involved in uh, doing this uh, you know there's everything from a, a sports broadcasting program through obviously film and uh, recording arts and also a bunch of social media programs now all, all kinds of great media centric uh, sort of uh, stuff and so what better to uh, go out into the world with a, a professional uh, you know amateur race team, uh, design or broadcast or social media campaign or something in your portfolio. I think it's a it's a pretty neat opportunity for students. So, you know, cool. beat that Yale. <laughs> <laughs> I think this also really captures the spirit of the rebel, right? Which is, you know, women out there exploring and adventuring and doing something, you know, that is a real challenge. And um, Full Sail, you know, they loved that idea and they really wanted to support that. And, um, you know, the the entertainment industry, it, notoriously women are still playing catch up, trying to get up to those senior level positions. And I know, Stephen, in your teaching, you've always been a huge supporter of really, you know, helping to to mentor and and bring more women into those important creative meetings and into those decision making roles uh, because the industry needs more of it. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we're super thrilled to have uh, Full Sail uh, as the uh, as the huge sponsor. Huge thank and, you to uh, them. Huge, huge thank yeah. you. We we can't wait to represent you. And we uh, and on on behalf of of, of the Full Sail uh, Dream Team, we are so happy to have you, uh, Jenna and Liza and Ike by proxy, uh, join the team. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> uh, it's gonna be fantastic. You know, there's the and the, it's it's a, another little side that the um, Full Sail logo is a DC three. Uh, which John Phelps uh, used to own a DC3, actually, uh, in Oregon. I, he had it up there. And uh, uh, John also owns a terrible Land Rover, really terrible <laughs> Land Rover. But he's owned some super cool Land Rovers in the past. He's a big Land Rover guy. He loves Land Rovers. Right on. Nice. Yeah, yeah cool. I'm, I'm yeah. excited that the Full Sail logo is pretty fun. Like mm -hmm. it's orange and orange, like cool airplane. It's gonna look good. We will do when when the truck is all done and wrapped and ready to uh, head out to Reno. We start the the Rebel close to Reno. Uh, we are going to uh, we're going to have to do some good social media reveals mm -hmm. of it. So stay tuned. If yep. so, if listeners want to follow along, what is the full and complete name of your team? The Full Sail Dream Team, Team One Fifty Five. Sometimes they'll right. list us by number and sometimes by name, and we are the Full Sail Dream Team. You sure are. You sure are. So, <laughs> what are some of the other sponsors? There's some incredible. Again. It, amazing, amazing sponsorship that uh, that you guys have been able to uh, to garner. All right. So next up, of course, um, is our good friend Ike Goss of Pangolin 4x4, who uh, helped provide a lot of parts and a lot of mechanical support. $100,000 in cash as well, which is <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Just fantastic. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, so huge thanks nice. to Ike, uh, of course, and uh, the Underpowered Hour. More for the emotional support <laughs> than, than anything else, I think. I think Ike is the spirit <laughs> animal of this team, really. <laughs> you know? yeah. The tiny, tiny Ike. Ike. Yeah. Tiny Ikes. We will have tiny Ikes all over this car, for <laughs> yeah. sure. For sure. Love it. Yeah, the goal is to have a tiny Ike on every uh, Rebel car, either uh, willingly or by force. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll just go along and we'll yeah. just sneak them onto everybody else's cars. Mm -hmm. They won't care. Mm -hmm. They won't mm -hmm. mind at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. next up, um, we have, uh, <clears throat> excuse us, sorry, I, I just realized that um, maybe we just need to, to look them up really quick and see. See, uh, what are they called? <laughs> for, for those of you only listening, for, for the ninety-eight percent of you that only listen, uh, it, it appears as though you are uh, holding a, a, the latest issue of uh, Molly My Mag. Oh, I Molly guess so. My Mag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. How, how funny. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, totally forgot for a second. But yes, yes. So um, this is a women's lifestyle magazine, and um, their love of 
women who are adventurers at heart and explorers and women come in all sort of types. So they got behind us and uh, wanted to support us. And we're really excited that they're going to be uh, covering some of the event, um, reaching out to Rebel and trying to get some coverage there and talk about it and, um, you know, kind of pitch it to women as like kind of the ultimate in terms of uh, challenge and, and uh, exploration and things like that. So we're super, super excited. Huge thanks to them for coming on board. Um, and you can go to their website, uh, mollymymag.com to find out where you can pick up a, a hard copy or you can follow along with all of their uh, information online. They post some really great articles and things like that. And um, really excited to see the Dream Machine point, 2.0 uh, in a future issue. So Very huge cool. thank you to them. Excellent. Super cool. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely have to uh, have to get some of those uh, Molly My Mag uh, issues, and maybe we can give them away on the show mm-hmm. once we mm-hmm. have that uh, once that that issue is out, so that people can uh, yeah can check it out. That's super cool. Yeah, and then next up, our good friend Ed Testa at Inland Empire Rovers down in Marietta, California, took the truck and did a ton of work on it while we were out of town this summer you know, helped put in a new radiator that we got and did a ton, you know, put in a a whole bunch of drive shafts and all sorts of things like that to get it rally ready. And so a huge thank you to him for a lot of the work that he donated to us, a lot of the parts that he donated to us uh, to help make this thing actually run and hopefully finish (laughs) the rebel. Well, and just like working long hours to get it done on the time crunch. Yeah. We were down there uh, a few weeks ago to pick up the truck. And I mean, right to the wire, he was, you know, climbing under there, fixing things, getting it ready to go. And so we could not have done this rally without him. Um, Ed also happens to be the president of the Southern California Rover Club. And so, you know, we'll have to have him on the show at some point in the near future. You guys can talk about what they have going on and uh, what he's got going on at his shop. He primarily works on Uh, discoveries and defenders. So where Ike, your business sort of tends to cater to the series vehicles, he kind of takes it to the discoveries, some of the classic Range Rovers, things like that. Uh, That's smart. That's smart. Yeah, that's way better. (laughs) Where the money is. (laughs) But there's so many more little plastic bits to break off. That's the only only issue. I've broken off so many plastic parts over the last couple of years. We we used to have some defenders and uh, we just kept a little uh, cup you know, of all the little tabs that fell off the dashboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. We have a completely free-floating instrument cr- cluster right now because I, I can't get the steering wheel off because it's uh, rusted. Uh, the splines are so rusted on there. So trying to uh, replace the binnacle, the plastic one, with a metal one, can't get it in there. So uh, we're just going to have to have the free-floating dash for this particular mm-hmm. event. That's a special, bring some special option. It'll be fine. Yeah. Duct tape. Yeah. yeah. Be, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's going to be, gonna be fine. just fine. I, I, I got some clips left over. I can send them to you. <laughs> yeah, just clip them in next there. up on our <laughs> list of sponsors, um, these next two sponsors we're really, really excited about. Um, we went to Overland Expo and uh, had a really great conversation uh, with a guy named Walter at Maxis Tires. Mm-hmm. And we're super, super thrilled that we're going to be running a set of their mud terrains, their Razor MT uh, tires on the Defender. Um, and with new tires, we needed to get new wheels because they're a little bit larger than the tires that we've run on this truck in the past. And we went to Braid uh, USA, and they came through with a really great sponsorship for us. And so uh, in about a week's time, she's getting new new mm-hmm. shoes. This thing is getting new shoes behind us here. Very fancy, fancy, pretty shoes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Maxis is a you know legendary desert racing. You know they've done the Baja. They've done you know they have tires in every major off road motorsport event. I think it's mm-hmm. fair to say that's huge. Braid wheels, absolutely legendary. Dakar, uh, you know, sort of wheels. They've done all of the all of the greatest uh, desert racing uh, sort of events as well. So that is a that is a pretty legit setup. Uh, yeah, for so sure. huge yeah. thank you to both of them because 
you know, that's going to be that's going to be a, a massive, massive improvement on what we were running on this in the past, specifically for this event and being able to run with bead locks in them so that we can really air down in the sand and not worry about losing our our, um, you know, our tire on the rim. So very, very, very exciting. And we're going to have six. We're going to have six of them. So we put uh, last weekend, Stephen and I modified our old roof rack to put it on the Defender. Uh, don't so don't tell carry. Front Runner. Don't tell Front. They'll send somebody <laughs> to pick it up. <laughs> don't tell them. So so we put uh, the roof rack on primarily to carry our Max tracks and our sixth tire. So we'll have two spares: one on the back door, one on the roof. Fingers crossed, we don't actually need the one on the roof, but you know, we're just gonna <laughs> easy to get just- down nearly impossible to get back up <laughs> see we have that crane up. that's sitting behind yeah, you that yeah, we can yeah. put it onto the roof with <laughs> but uh, without the gantry crane i would say uh not a super fun thing to get back up there although i will say the the braid wheel and max's tire combination is almost 25 pounds lighter with air in them than the current wolf steel wheel uh, setup is because those military uh, wheels are insanely, insanely uh, heavy and are meant to take, you know, huge side impacts from rocks and bombs and everything else. Whereas the braid wheel is meant for very high speed, which we will not accomplish, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but are, are meant, uh, are meant for rally. So they're, they're quick to change and they're super strong. Their, uh, you know, torsional rigidity is incredible. Like they're, uh, they're, I mean, it is. It's a it's a spectacular, real deal rally wheel and uh, and real race car tires. Professional so. rally wheels. Yeah, Walter from Max's Tires stopped by our shop, and he's a super nice guy and a real enthusiast. So uh, thanks to Walter for uh, stepping up and helping us out with that. And it's not even Walter's department that deals with sponsorships, yeah. but he has really gone to bat for us, mm-hmm. and you know, gone and and. Um, you know, talk to the appropriate people at Maxis and gotten them to back us. And so the tires are on their way here and early next week they should arrive and we get to go put them yeah. on the vehicle and recalibrate the territory. <laughs> yeah. When the uh, higher ups at Maxis said, should we listen to this podcast? Walter said, no, nah, I, I don't think you need to. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So thank you for that, uh, Walter, and uh, and for our good friends at Braid as well. That is uh, that is super cool. So uh, we'll uh, now. Uh, I'm sure many people will ask why put the the tire on the roof and uh, not on the hood, uh, and that is because the hood is a sponsorship opportunity, and that uh, clapped out original hood will get replaced with a fiberglass racing hood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So not just that. But also, because these tires are wider than the yeah, skinny ones that we typically ran, and Jenna is taller than I am, but neither of us are the tallest people in the world. <laughs> so to see over those tires was going to be a, a, just an unnecessary obstruction. Mm-hmm. Um, it, we decided it would be better to put it up on the roof and have a clear vision in front of us rather than mm-hmm. have, you know, uh, uh, this mm-hmm. big tire sticking out in front of us. Yeah, and it's getting an even lighter hood, so uh, even easier to uh, pop it open and uh, do anything that needs to uh, happen. That means uh, that checker there, plating so. is going away right there. It means I can't stand yeah. that. No. No, <laughs> well, no but I right. put a ladder right. on the back, so <laughs> we can climb up the back now. Yeah, and it's got two shovels. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Always need to bring two so, shovels. Always bring two shovels. Otherwise, you're digging alone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you're digging alone. Wisdom uh, I okay. learned What's from next? Ike Goss. Me too. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what is next? So next up, <clears throat> we, um, we're we going to be looking super styling while also protecting our noggin. Uh, huge thank you to <laughs> Pyrotech Racing, which provided us with our uh, helmets. So this year, yeah. the Rebel... Uh, they updated their requirements and this, the helmets needed to be Snell 2020 um, rating, which meant that almost everybody in the Robel was getting new helmets this year. Um, and Firetech came to bat for us and got us these nice vented open face helmets. They got us uh, different cheek pads they threw in so that we could get the fit just right. We've been wearing, around, yep. wearing them around the workshop. I've been wearing them at home, making dinner, yep. folding laundry, get, strengthening our neck muscles <laughs> so that we're getting used to wearing them for, you know, 12 hours a day. 
when we're on the You know, for those of you who are fans of uh, Formula One, you'll know that uh, drivers working out their neck muscles is like one of the primary things that they do. Uh, So just like (laughs) Formula One, uh, it does make sense for you guys to start. We're Formula One drivers now. Essentially now we are Formula One. For those interested who uh, aren't watching the video along with our moms that uh, Jenna did just model the helmet, but uh, if you need a mental picture, if you've seen the Mel Brooks film Spaceballs, it's essentially (laughs) the same it's the same look. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it looks good. We'll get some logos on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, will the helmets be themed along with the vehicle? Mm-hmm. Wow. Better very it. cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's going to be very cool. It's yep, going to be very gonna cool. Be great. All right. So who's next? It's going to be great. And then we have we just have two more that we're super happy to have coming on board. We have Grizzlies brand, um, and they make really yummy granola. And they do, oh, like, yeah. spice nuts and just some other, like, very, they do mueslis. They're actually based in uh, Eugene, Oregon. Our oh, right on. Locale. And, uh, yeah, Wit, we met Hit Wit, actually, at the uh, Overland Expo, too. Um, and he and I had coffee one day and just talked some more about sponsorship stuff. So they're going to send us some snacks. And mm-hmm. um, so we should, and they were They'll even like put custom stickers on them, like they can brand them to our event if we want, which is pretty fun. So we can have a lot of uh, snackies throughout the day or for yogurt and breakfast in the morning, toss some granola on. Which is my favorite thing in the the morning. So we're very excited. I believe Linus uh, has also approached them as his official snack sponsor. No (laughs) response yet. You need need a snack sponsor in your life. Uh, We definitely determined early on we wanted a snack sponsor. (laughs) So we're good there. That's great. That's awesome. Happy to have them. And a little, uh, a good Eugene, Oregon company uh, joining Mm -hmm. the uh, the ranks of the supporting uh, local uh, penguin. Yeah, exactly. That's That's, uh, that's fantastic. And then last but not least, we have Expedition Imports uh, who came on board to uh, to help us out and send us a, a little cash our way. And um, they didn't even want any recognition, but we're going to recognize them anyway and say thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it. It's, it's because of sponsors that not only are we going to get to do this event this year, but it makes the idea of being able to do this event multi-year and improve year after year and you know, maybe maybe even try to get a Land Rover on the podium at one point in the future. Um, you know, and everybody has to start somewhere, and we really appreciate each and every one of these sponsors for helping us get started on this journey. And we're really excited to see where we go next with this. You know, um, so the next thirty days is uh, we're we're gonna be we're gonna be hard at busy, work. Busy, busy. Yeah. That is incredibly uh, exciting, and uh, you know you can follow along uh, obviously on all the socials. Uh, our social, uh, the Underpowered Hour, uh, of course, uh, we will continue to follow you guys. But what about the uh, socials for uh, for the team itself? So you can uh, you can keep up with us on TikTok and Instagram um, at Overland Her Overland underscore Her. Um, and I'm trying to document a lot of the stuff that we're doing and trying to talk a lot about what is going into this. I have lots of videos planned to come out soon. So um, that is sort of the main way that you can follow us um, in the meantime. When we get closer to the Rebel, we'll make sure that we share some links to how you can follow us. But if you uh, go to rebelrally.com and join their newsletter, you will get their daily newsletter while the event is happening that will give you the updates and some amazing photography and tell you what's happening with all the teams, what the standings are, what some of the challenges have been, where we are on any given day, because of course the course isn't going to be released until the morning of that day's event. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, and then they will have a tracker in our car And at any time, you can go to their website and follow along and see where every vehicle in the rally currently is, where we fall in the point standing and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So if the Defender is still in Reno and everybody else is in Mexico, we'll know something (laughs) went sideways. That's right. That's right. And if you see everybody is kind of over here on the map and we're like way over here, that's not a good sign. Not (laughs) not a good sign. But there's nothing we can do to get in touch with you. So we'll just have to sort of, well, it is what it is. Just, Just cross your fingers. We figure it out. Yeah. There, there what if go. people want to uh, support the team? Is there a way to do that? If, uh, you know, I, I think all of our moms are already on board, but uh, <laughs> if someone else's mom might want to uh, to get involved, how would they do that? Well, um, first of all, you know, uh, we are so grateful to anybody that wants to support the team. Uh, not required, always invited. Um, and uh 
The Rebel Rally has a really neat gift certificate program. You can go to their website and you can click on gift certificates. And any amount that anybody wants to contribute, if you put Team 155 in the notes at checkout, that gift certificate will get applied to our gas fund to pay for fuel in this vehicle. Um, and it will cover some of our costs there. It's a really small, easy, simple way that you can help us out. Not required, but, um, but we do appreciate anybody who is interested in that as sort of our last minute push. It's the last thing that we need to pay for before we, uh, before we set out on our journey. Mm -hmm. And to clarify, like we can't, we don't stop at gas stations along the way and we can't bring any fuel. Like we can't bring jerry cans with us in the car. So we basically, there's a fuel truck that is come like, you know, at base camp every night that the rally is providing and we have to purchase fuel from the fuel truck. So that's, that's how that is sort of mm -hmm. logistically coordinated through the, the rally organization. So that gift certificate fund goes towards our, our basically our fuel stipend. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. It's like meal and points. You, in the you gain <laughs> rebel gas points that you can uh, exchange for uh, merchandise later on. Which that's is, yeah, that's <laughs> which, is, which is always, which is always nice. Well, uh, that is absolutely spectacular. What a fantastic uh, group of uh, sponsors and individuals who are involved in this, who knew that uh, this uh, idea of uh, one day doing uh, this uh, amazing <laughs> event would uh, blossom into uh, into such an incredible uh, endeavor with uh, with such an amazing group of people. So yeah. it's that, uh, that was just like March, April. We're like, oh, right? maybe we'll do this one day. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, this year has uh, happened really, really fast. Yeah. Really, this really together. fast. Yeah. No doubt. Ike and I have accomplished so very little in that same amount of time. It is uh, it's <laughs> virtually staggering. nothing. Yeah, virtually it's nothing. Negative. Staggering. Negative progress. <laughs> <It's true>. <laughs> <laughs> Ike is slowly moving backwards. But uh, hey, that's how it's it goes. It's not so sometimes. slow. It's no, no. Really <laughs> <laughs> the handbrake has come off and uh, Ike is rolling downhill quickly. Um, so, well, thank you uh, both for joining us again. And this will certainly not be the last time. We'll definitely do some updates in between now and leaving uh, for the event. Uh, definitely check out social media for uh, unveils of all the sponsors as well as uh, a little later in this month the unveil of the fully wrapped Dream Machine 2.0 uh, Land Rover Defender for a 22-23 season and uh, yeah stay uh, stay with us to talk about whatever it is that I can I talk about in the uh, meantime and uh, hey again if you uh, don't mind uh, Liza and Jenna sure would appreciate if you head over to the old uh, Apple Podcasts and uh, throw down a review uh, maybe leave uh, you know five to five stars and uh, that really <laughs> somewhere uh, between there yeah, somewhere between five and five. That really helps us uh, get uh, discovered by uh, new uh, Land Rover enthusiasts uh, and perhaps people who uh, haven't uh, given in to their inner Land Rover enthusiast yet. We like to think of ourselves as a, a major gateway drug. We are the marijuana of <laughs> Land Rover enthusiasm. Uh, next thing you know, you'll be on the uh, the heroin of 80-inch ownership. So yeah. uh, just the same <laughs> life-destroying yeah, life uh, qualities as uh, serious hard drugs. So uh, thank you guys uh, again. Uh, thank, thank you, you to all of the sponsors. Uh, what an amazing event this is uh, going to be. Uh, we're super excited and, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. All the best of luck. Uh, I know it's like 90 degrees in the workshop right now. So, uh, and it's, <laughs> it's nine o'clock in the morning, so uh, it's going to get, uh, going to get hot here. This is the greatest time in Los Angeles to work on your vintage Land Rover in an unair conditioned workshop. Uh, you Perfect. know, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. I was measuring, I, we put the new temp sensor in the uh, radiator and we were measuring the radiator and I figured the temp sensor must be wrong. It's reading like a hundred degrees, but the car has been off for two days and uh, no laser did. No, it's a hundred degrees. And the, the coolant <laughs> inside the radiator <laughs> is still a hundred degrees. We had to it's thermometer drip it and it was. Yeah. So, yep. Yep. So there you go. So uh, enjoy that. Well, uh, without uh, further ado, thank you guys again. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank All you. Right. Great to hear from you guys. Good luck. Bye. The 
The Underpowered Hour is produced by Liza Barris, Ike Goss, and me, Steve Barris. Pavel Svartov composed and performed our theme music. Consider supporting the show on Patreon, and if you already do, thank you. Your support makes the show possible. For even more, check out our Instagram or Facebook.